Hello there, my super heavy tank aficionados, and welcome back, quite soon this time, to our series known as the Space Marine Armory. Even though I covered the base version of the Sikaran battle tank quite recently, at the request of one of my subscribers, I discovered another very interesting and high-tech heavy tank. However, this is not one of the most straightforward main battle tanks you've ever seen but a tank destroyer instead. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you for today the Cerberus Heavy Tank Destroyer. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Cerberus is a super heavy tank destroyer that was used in limited numbers by the Space Marine Legions during the Great Crusade and later during the Horus Heresy in the 31st millennium. The Cerberus was a rare and experimental variant of the super heavy tank known as the Spartan Assault Tank, also used by the Space Marine Legions, both of which made use of the same armor, same hull and chassis design. The Spartan Assault Tank was developed by the Mechanicum in response to the Space Marine Legion's demand of a vehicle powerful and versatile, but also with the ability to carry Terminators into combat. The Cerberus, on the other hand, was designed near the end of the Great Crusade by the Mechanicum of Mars as a way to field test a specific Archaeotech weapon. This weapon was recovered during the Great Crusade and was known as the Neutron Laser Projector. The Neutron Laser Projector itself was retro-engineered by the Mechanicum after being rediscovered within Dark Age of Technology battlefield wreckage, recovered at great cost from the Forbidden World of Deep Hyades VI by Mechanicum explorators from the Forge World of Galatea. The Mechanicum placed the retro-engineered prototype weapon into the modified chassis of the Spartan Assault Tank using the very large interior of that vehicle to mount the sizable atomantic arc reactors and radiation shielding needed for its operation. The result of the Mechanicum's labors was a relatively small and mobile weapon system. Relatively small because it still was a very big Astarte-sized vehicle. It was capable of rivaling the firepower of the much larger turbo laser weapons commonly found on Titans and other super heavies. The neutron laser projector was both more compact and capable of higher amounts of collateral damage than other similar weaponry. This new weapon system was not welcomed into the Imperial Arsenal without some controversy, however as it was unstable and presented great safety concerns for many within the Mechanicum. Despite all the instability and controversy, the Mechanicum delivered preliminary detachments of the Cerberus into service of several Space Marine Legions for comprehensive battlefield testing and trials. Unfortunately, it was not long after this that the vehicles were pressed by the Traitor Legions, who popped up in the meantime, to turn their destructive power against the Imperium itself, rather than the war machines of Xenos. During the Horus Heresy in the early 31st millennium, the Mechanicum did not stop their study of neutron laser technology, and eventually did develop a variant of the neutron laser projector that was smaller yet just as powerful, known as the Neutron Laser Cannon. This weapon would go on to be mounted on Saber Tank Hunters of the Space Marine Legions, and on the Valdor tank hunters of the Imperial Army. It is unknown, however, which of these two vehicles was developed first, and which side of the conflict made the best use of them. The Cerberus tank destroyer is an example of one of the many classes of war machines that rose to prominence and was used by several of the legions, only to fall from common use among the Astartes as the Age of Imperium ground on. One of the reasons for this fall was the drastic change in the way space marines were utilized after the legions were broken down into chapters during the second founding. Only a small number of the newly formed space marine units retained any of these vehicles in their armories. There were other contributing factors as well, not least among these is that the Imperium simply could not maintain the arcane systems many of these potent engines of destruction utilized. Countless tech priests made it their life's work to recover even a fraction of these long-lost treasures, 
such as the legendary and ill-understood flare shields once utilized by certain classes of armored vehicles. Others say that such technologies are the echoes of earlier, darker times, and fear that to resurrect them is to call forth the horrors of the distant past, and to invite the return of forces which are best left alone. It is unknown if the Adeptus Mechanicus is still able to build new Cerberus tanks in the late 41st millennium, or if the technology has been lost completely, like so much else from the Great Crusade era. The base variant of the Cerberus heavy tank destroyer is armed, as mentioned before, with a fixed hull-mounted forward-firing neutron laser projector. This was an extremely misunderstood weapon, whose secrets are known only by the highest circles of the Mechanicum of Mars, and that is more powerful than any weapon system of its size, comparable only to Titan-sized weaponry. This weapon fires a powerful energy beam, capable of crippling or outright destroying many armored vehicles. The neutron energy beam emitted by the neutron laser projector's ray collimator is capable of rupturing enemy armor at a molecular level, often resulting in the target vehicle being vaporized in a massive explosion. Only the most heavily armored super heavy tanks and titan scale vehicles can hope to survive the forces unleashed by such a weapon. Even if the target is not destroyed outright by the initial beam, it is far from being out of the woods. The neutron energy of the attack will overwhelm and disable the target vehicle's electronics and systems temporarily with a storm of electromagnetic radiation. The main drawbacks of the weapon can be split into two big issues. The first is that the atomantic arc reactors needed to power the weapon are inherently unstable and can cause an apocalyptic explosion if damaged or destroyed. The second problem is that should the neutron beam fail to transfer its energy discharge entirely into the target, a dangerous feedback can occur to the cannon itself, which can cause damage to the vehicle hull and electronic systems. Nevertheless, vehicles mounting the neutron laser projector, obviously including the Cerberus, are greatly valued by any faction that can afford even one of them. Also, as you might guess, with such old and complex pieces of technology, they are quite revered by the Adeptus Mechanicus in general. The Cerberus can also be outfitted with sponsor-mounted heavy bolters or last cannons, and a pintle-mounted twin-linked bolter, combi bolter, or other combi weapon, a heavy flamer, a heavy bolter, or multi-melta, or a havoc missile launcher for firepower and versatility. The vehicle can also be equipped with a hunter-killer missile launcher, armored plating, smoke launchers, and a searchlight. However, due to the instability of the vehicle's main weapon and power source, it is always equipped with a flare shield for extra protection from enemy fire. Or, I should say, was always equipped, as flare shield technology is one of those things no longer understood by the Imperium. Some known or famous individual Cerberus heavy tank destroyers include The Koronzan This vehicle belongs to the space marine chapter known as the Exorcists. It is believed to have remained in stasis for over a thousand years before being reawakened. It was accompanied by way of dark ritual to take part in the Ashen War against a demon prince known as the Horned God. Though it did survive that fell campaign, the vehicle was immediately reinterred and has not been deployed since, for reasons which remain classified. Hell's Judgment This was a potent war machine of the World Eaters Legion. It was held back from the initial stage of the defense of the Urgul Depression during the Dropsite Massacre on Istvan V. It was only committed once the Iron Warriors, the Night Lords, Word Bearers, and Alpha Legion had showed their true color and turned upon the Salamanders, Raven Guard, and Iron Hands. When the World Eaters' super heavy tank destroyers, with the Hell's Judgment at their head, was unleashed against them, the effect of their near suicidal assault upon the Loyalists was catastrophic, shattering any chance of organized resistance. The Intemperata 
The Intemperata was one war machine of the Iron Hands Legion, in an armored wing of a dozen of them deployed to the surface of Istvan V during the Dropside Massacre. The engine took part in supporting the Iron Hands assault, and in so doing, screened an entire Terminator unit of its parent Averni clan from the heavy guns of the Death Guard. The Intemperata's unit came under punishing and sustained fire from massed batteries of laser destroyers and graviton cannons, when the Iron Warriors revealed their true allegiance. All of them, except for the Intemperata itself, were reduced to flaming wreckage within minutes. The war engine was last seen engaging the traitor god engine known as the Dies Irae of the Legion Mortis, in order to draw its fire from the Iron Hand's infantry squads, a noble sacrifice for which the Intemperata will always be remembered. Some technical details of this bad boy include There are four known patterns. Its crew consists of a commander, a driver, and a gunner. It weighs a whopping 174 tons, its length is 10 meters, its width is 6.1 meters, its height is 5 meters, its maximum speed on-road is 35 kilometers an hour, its maximum speed off-road is 30 kilometers an hour, its main ammunition can offer approximately 20 5-second blasts, its superstructure armor is 95 millimeters, and its hull armor is another 95 millimeters. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about a Cerberus heavy tank destroyer for today. I know I referenced some other vehicles like the Spartan and the Valdor in this episode, but in case you're worried I skipped them, it is not the case. I will, of course, cover those two at some point. Is the Cerberus tank destroyer among your favorite Space Marine vehicles? What do you like or dislike most about it? Feel free to share any such opinions, questions or thoughts in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you a lot for watching and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.